Hello again. Let's have a quick look at uh, the last little bits of drums. Uh, let's have a look at what's being done to parallel process the drums and also a quick look at the drum bus, which um, is done through my analog summing, part of my analog summing rig and through a set of analog compressors. So I can't show you the set, well I can, I can show you snapshots of the settings um, and I can mute them on and off because that's actually running live all the time. Um, that's not printed in at all. Let's have a quick listen to the um, parallel drums first, or the parallel processing on the drums. Um, it's a quickly one quick word on that. I mean, they're they're fed from the buses, so it's a parallel a, a processed feed. So it's after the gating, um, rather than just copy the drum bus and parallel process that. I'm using this independent busing system. I think I've mentioned this before about uh, being able to create and, and alter and manipulate the, the balance differently for the parallel processing. It just works, especially in heavy music, to give the drums a bit more weight and a bit more dominance in the parallel processing. It just gives the snare a sense of size. It's actually a smaller drum uh, than than the rest usually on there and it just needs it just helps in parallel to to give it that little extra drive and give that dynamism and drama to the snare so that's being fed through this uh, into this bus here this one's grayed out because this is the only thing on here is an EQ let me just check that EQ make sure there's nothing going on there uh, it's possibly just a tiny bit of yeah, again, a little bit of high frequency control um, and uh, a high pass. So that would be an active EQ. Maybe I should show you that. Oh, uh, no, that's not happening. One sec. Yeah, so uh, there you can see um, <laughs> it's just about working. Uh, Let's, uh, in honesty, it's not meant to um, be so loaded in that way. So uh, let me just turn that back off. We, what we can do, though, is hear how it sounds once it's processed by uh, a very nice um, stereo uh, compressor by Chandler, uh, a TG1. Um, very fortunate to have one of these. Uh, uh, I paid for it. It wasn't given to me, so I earned it, to be fair. But uh, it is uh, it is a beautiful compressor to have on that on duties. Regard that it's in a limiting mode, and it is set with its quickest recovery. And it just adds such a great spank to it. Let's have a quick listen. It's just a snappy, punchy sound uh, with just the right amount of bounce. Uh, to the cymbals um, but you can hear the snare is very heavily weighted in there the other processing parallel processing chain on here is a rather unusual one it's one I've been developing I don't know of anybody else doing this right now um, uh, not in this way anyway uh, I've narrowed this down or, or uh, honed this down to just two plugins right now um, one is a relatively new plugin, which has allowed me to take off five or six that I was using to try and get this to this stage before. Um, uh, the point that, or the pro, this is a channel that's being fed from the kick and the snare. Um, I feel with parallel processing, you lose quite a lot of transient impact um, and cut from. So uh, this is a process that, I've that I'm developing. I'm still in the process of trying to fine tune this uh, to add some of that back so that the drums have the ability to cut into processing further downstream, such as the drum bus, and then again, subsequently downstream, the master bus and any, pro any mastering processing. So I'm, what I'm trying to do here is to isolate the transient information from the kick and the snare and then create a very controlled parallel um, so this plugin here called spiff is just amazing at this it's a transient designer a transient kind of uh, adds transient impact to the image um, and 
uh, if I take it out of delta mode first. Um, so it's just a feed of kick and snare. I'll play you that first. And you can see that it's boosting the transient impact of that to sharpen it up. This plugin, though, has this thing called delta mode, which just uh, it demonstrates to you what you're adding. So it's taking out the original signal and just playing what it's added itself. So you just get this very percussive sound. I'll boost this so maybe you can hear this a bit more clearly. It's a very odd sort of percussive, snappy kind of tone. That's the part of the image that I want to even out. So that's fed into a limiter. I'll turn it down a little bit now. And the limiter, Pro L2, is just working very quickly to even those kick and snare hits out. So I've got a, a much more even transient impact to the um, to the delivery here. And if I feed this into the parallel signal. You can just hear that it has a really subtle effect on keeping the front edge of all of these impacts sharp and I've just found it to be really useful if you want to heavily process downstream with you know extreme kind of compression settings or add real drama with you know compressors that the transient information goes wandering I know this is my attempt to get, regain control and put that back. Um, one last thing on the drum bus. As I've said, uh, the drums uh, are um, all being sent. Let me, uh, having again trouble with my soloing setup today. I don't know why that is. I will look into that at another time. Um, these are the solo, the drums in solo, hopefully. There you go. Oh, one second, we need to kick in there. There we go, and the snare. Right, there's the drums in solo. Um, this is all being fed through an analog summing unit uh, to a drum, a pair of uh, distresses. And you can hear when I switch that off that the impact that they are having on the overall signal. Here's a quick look at how that's set up. Uh, the analog summing box is a passive one, so it's going through some preamp gain. These are a pair of uh, API pre's. So there's a little bit of harmonic content added to the drums via these. They go into a distressor in this uh, drum spank mode. It's a limiting mode with a high pass to allow low, low energy through and a focus on the uh, mid-range. A little boost into the detector so it reacts to the snap of the snare a bit harder. The detectors are linked but the stereo imaging is not. Um, it's a very slow attack. It's set to its lowest attack setting. And the release time is, of course, set rhythmically to the tempo or set to the tempo of the tune. Uh, and this is it back on again. Now, you can hear that that is pretty uh, pretty heavily processed. There are also a couple of other things that I mentioned slightly earlier on that I need to come back to. Um, it was an, again, quite, I refer back to Eric Valentine quite a lot. He's done a lot recently to highlight some really cool mixing techniques in his series, Mixing Records with Eric Valentine. Um, I recommend you look at that. It's far better at this kind of thing than I am. Um, this is a process he used on a Death, death From Above record that he talked about um, mixing. Um, there are two feeds uh, feeding directly out of this entire drum bus chain that I've got. So the drums are all being sent through this quite heavy compression setting here. Um, what happens in that scenario is that cymbals and room sounds get choked out and, and all of a sudden it feels sort of dry. So these are direct feeds 
to a different point in the mix that are unprocessed. They are, however, the processed overheads and room sounds. So I'm happy with the way these sounds are processed in their own buses, and I'm just sending these buses raw, sending some of the less processed signal outside of this extreme bus drum bus compression ratio. So let's have a quick listen to those off. Back on again. It just adds an, a much more natural extension back onto the rooms, allowing me to compress. It's parallel compressing, but in reverse. I'm unparalleling the signal out of the compression ratio. And the same, same with the cymbals. To soften the, the cymbal sounds, I'm just adding a little bit. There's a little bit less of those uh, because that's not such a strong signal and as the room sounds. So that's the process of that. That's sort of outward paralleling, uh, paralleling out of the compression bus. Um, and that's, on, that's what's going on with the drums. Uh, we'll come back shortly with a look at the bass. Thanks for now. <laughs> 